Hello and welcome back to another session of Switch Connect program. In this session, we are going to look at a deployment environment and how thinking a little bit of out of box or being a little bit elastic about your interconnects will help you to make a best or the smart decision to choose the right trend, right transceiver or the available option for your network deployment. So let's get started with this session. Here I have taken a customer deployment scenario where we have a customer who has existing links of 40 gig leap spine architecture. Now, as the data center grew up, customer wants to upgrade their leap spine links to 100 gig speeds. That's why they chose 9300 as their spine switch and a combination of 8325, 8360s and 10Ks as their top of the rack switches. Here is a configuration what they have in their data center. They have 29. So what they require is a 29 cross 100 gig links. Plus extra links for future growth. And because of this, they have chosen 9300 as their spine switch. The critical information about this deployment is the details of their existing fiber plant. So they have multi mode fiber across their fiber plant. And the standard of multi mode fiber is OM4. Connector type they have on their existing fiber infrastructure is LC. And the link distance requirement for their deployment is for 100 meter. Now here is the challenge for this deployment that customer wants to use their existing fiber infrastructure when they build these new links for 100 gig. So typically in such cases when you are using a 400 gig switch as a spine and you want to use it to split into 100 gigs to be used in your top of the rack switches we suggest typically this combination of optics to be deployed in the network which uses a 400 gig sr8 transceiver in your 400 gig port and a 100 gig sr2 on your 100 gig side now the 400 gig transceiver actually supports the MPO 16 connector type and the SR2 supports your MPO 12 type of connector. Combining this, you, what you will get that you connect your 400 gig uh, MPO 12 based transceiver to your uh, 9300. You then take a MPO 16 to 4 MPO 12 split cable which on the other hand is connected to your 100 gig SR2s. Giving you a better picture, here is a graphical view of what I was mentioning. So you have taken your 400 gig SR8 on this side for your 9300. You inserted a MPO 16 to 4 MPO 12 MMF split cable. And then it is taken to the other hand side. Now you have to focus because the deployment is asking for 400 gig MMF combination. We only currently have this MPO 16 based QDD transceiver which supports MMF cable. So we are supposed to use this in our R9300 switch. One point to once again notice, and this is a critical one, is that the part that I have mentioned here is not same for the customer deployment. They do not have the MPO patch panels deployed in their network. Rather, they have a LC based fiber infrastructure. That means that we might want to think about something else or come up with another solution that will help you to fulfill this requirement. So thinking a little bit out of the box, here is the solution that you might want to use. In this solution, what you did use took a MPO 16 transceiver, same as what we were doing earlier, but this time for the split cable, you choose MPO 16 to 8 LC split. And that enabled you to insert these 
split ends to your LC patch panels that the customer currently has. On the other hand side, or before I move to the other hand side, I just want to highlight that because you are taking this eight, uh, a 400 gig link and breaking into eight LCs, each of these LCs is now having 50 gig link support, where, uh, which then you insert it to your LC patch panels. For, uh, through the structured cabling infrastructure, it is then travel to uh, travel to the other LC, other end of LC patch panels, where you took these out using a MPO 12 to four LC split. Now, why this four split cable? Because you want to take 50 gig of these links that are coming in to your transceiver module and I'll come up to why we have chose this. Uh, four split MPO 12. Uh, it is very crucial to understand this point, which I'll highlight in my next slide. So you will use these MPO 12 to four LC split cable and insert the LC parts to your LC patch panel. You might want that you, you don't want to use this bit two middle links of your LC because you are taking 50 gig links and two of those 50 gig links when taken together will give you a 100 gig link through this MPO 12. So 50 into 50 for this one, 50 into 50 for this one and so on. You will be able to take your MPO 16 base 400 gig link to your SR2 on the other side. Here is a pin view or the pin out for exact solution that we are proposing. Now you might want to see that broadly we are suggesting or we are doing the same thing finally what we would have done in case of MPO 16 to direct MPO 12 split. For which the pin out is supposed to be this. So what we have to smartly do is we have to create a same pin out or we have to stage the same pin out using this LC split. So we have to make sure that when we are using this LC split, the pin outs that are mapped to each LC is when connected to the other end should be mapped very crucially to each exact pins of MPO 12 connectors, which finally should match this pin out. That's where I was mentioning these pin out architectures or these pin out graphs is very important to understand for your deployment. So this was an example of customer deployment and little bit out of the box thinking and including certain other solutions and knowing about the technologies will help you to make a better decision for your deployment. So that's all for this session and we'll meet again in the next session for another quick update. Thanks all for watching this video.